Hello, uh, Krista Schmieder here, and we're going to talk a little bit today about a beginning project for a mask making class that I adapted from Beginning Ceramics for making rattles with sculpted faces on them. It's a really good way to um, kind of get a sense of the kids' skills, where they're starting at, so you know um, how far you can push them as you start your first assignment. And it's also a good way for them to um, get in touch with the clay for the first time if they've never used it before, and uh, just a good way for them to get the um, people at their table together and get to know each other a little bit. So let's get started. So the very first thing I had them do uh, when they came to class as I was introducing myself is I gave them a little chunk of clay, mainly because it's really hard to get 14 year olds their first class in high school to sit still. Um, so if you give them a little bit of clay, at least you know where their energy is going to be. And I asked them to make a series of small balls just by rolling them around in the palm of their hand. I had them make, I think I said make five to ten, but they really, they probably only need five, but that way if someone's gone a day, then they've already made some extras for me, so I don't have to do it. Um, and then what I have them do is I have them put all of their balls of clay into a, a large bowl, and then I blow dry that or let it dry overnight. And so when they come out, they're a little bit, um, they're harder, they're bone dry, so they won't stick to the clay. And this will actually be the mechanism that makes them rattle. So you have to make sure you have them do this first, otherwise the next part won't make sense. Um, once they have their balls of clay, I have them start by making a small pinch cup. Um, I believe I have a video on making a basic pinch cup on there somewhere. Um, in terms of the tools for making their basic pinch cup, um, with water, a lot of kids will want to put their hands in the water and drench their piece. But really what I tell them to do is get a small section of their canvas wet and then get rid of the water so you're not tempted by it because really the amount of water you need is just a slight touch of a damp canvas and then you can rub all of the cracks out. But the kids always just want to put more and more and more water on them. This is also a good project for students to figure out if they even like the clay so that they can escape if this is something terrible for them. Um, once they've made their basic face shape, they need to make the top piece and it's better if it's slightly round. Um, you don't want it to look flat on top because then that gives you no spot to put the face and the hair and all that jazz. So you want it to be slightly round and you want the edges to line up so they're about the same size. Um, then they are going to take their dry balls of clay and put them inside their piece. So I think probably for this size, five will be okay. You want there to be enough room that when you shake it, they can really rattle around and make a nice sound. If you put wet balls of clay inside of here, um, they're gonna stick to the wall and then when you fire them, the kids are gonna take their rattle and shake it and nothing's gonna happen. Um, one trick is you can actually take the rattle and bang it against the table one time. The kids will freak out and think you're gonna break it. They'll be fine, but that'll probably be enough to uh, dislodge the balls on the inside so that it actually rattles. Uh, once the balls are on the inside, you're gonna take your needle tool. You're gonna scratch everything up. They always want to rush this part. Make sure they go two directions. I always like to, this probably joke will be outdated in about five years, but I always tell them that um, if it's one direction, it sucks. But they probably don't know that band anymore by the time this is out there. All right. Scratch everything up. Then you're going to say, goodbye, little balls. See you later. It's the last time you'll see the inside of your rattle. When I was in high school, I used to write secret messages on the inside so that in thousands of years, when it got cracked open, somebody would know all of my teenager thoughts. I'm really glad I don't have those anymore. I'd probably be embarrassed. All right, so now I'm going around, and I'm making sure that all the clay is combined. Um, a lot of students are going to do this with a sponge. They're going to take their sponge and be like, okay, it's smooth. Okay, first of all, way too much water. Second of all, this little line, when this gets put in the kiln, is going to turn into a big crack when we fire it because the clay shrinks and it'll pull away. So you need to make sure you actually blend it. So I tell them to find their most honest friend and ask them if they can still see the line. And if they can still see the line, it's not blended enough. And if they don't have their most honest friend, then I'm their most honest friend. And I say, no, go back and smooth it. All right. 
Once they have this basic ovoid shape, so kind of head-like shape, they can start to block in where they're going to put their features. Um, some kids choose to um, intentionally distort their figures. I ask that they don't do it too much just so I can see that they know where things go. And I remind them that eyes are about halfway down on the head. Everybody wants to put them up here, but eyes really happen in the middle. So I'll tell them to kind of block out where their eyes are going to go. I also remind them that there are five eye widths in between um, each side of the head. So if you were to break this into five segments, there'd be a middle section that's an eye width, two eyes, and then an eye width on either side. Um, and then from there, they can block out kind of the basic face features. I'll add some hair to this guy. And once they kind of know where everything's going, then they can actually start adding clay and sculpting. So as the students are sculpting their pieces, I walk around and give them feedback about different sculptural elements. I try to make sure that all of my students know kind of what direction they're going before I actually sit down and grade it. But when I do grade it, I use um, kind of a combination of grading a pinch pot where I'm looking for smooth, even walls. Obviously, you can't see the inside of their piece, but you can kind of tell by the weight of it if they've thinned it out enough. Um, also, making sure that line that they put together um, is completely sealed, it didn't far, fall apart in the kiln. Uh, after that, I let them glaze it before I do the final critique, and then I grade on elements and principles of design, like did they use appropriate colors and shading and texture, is their design interesting? Um, they are starting with just a face, so their creativity is limited a little bit, but because I use this for mask making, I really needed to see where they were at with sculpting a face before I moved on for my first lesson of getting them sculpting a mask. Um, Another thing you might want to have them consider is how their face will be sitting on a table when it's finally done. Uh, some of the masks, uh, not the masks, some of the pinch pots, their faces are pointing down. So I like to tell the students to tip their faces up so that you can actually see them when it's sitting on a table. And this can be done by adding a foot ring um, or flattening out one of the sides of the pot so that when you set it down, it looks up at you. Some of the kids think that's kind of creepy, but um, you want to be able to see all that hard work you put into it. The timeline for this project uh, is probably, if you have 50 minute classes, it'll probably take the whole week if you have students who have never played with clay. Uh, I'm very lucky that we have block classes, so I give them two hour and a half long days, and usually by the following class period, they're done. Um, some of the students who take a little bit longer, it's a really good way for me to gauge where they're at and how long things are going to take, um, but most students can do that. If students miss the first week of class, um, this is a really easy project for another student to teach their friend to get them caught up. So it's another way if you um, are in a place where students are switching in and out of classes, it's a really good assignment to start the term off without feeling like those students who transfer in are getting really behind.